Alrighty, folks. Uh, welcome back to EM three seventy eight SI online. WebEx. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, five, five, six. You know the drill. Um, show up, ask questions. Uh, there's more content there. I usually go over. I usually have another problem planned. So if you get to WebEx, you get to see another problem. Um, it's more than just the one that we do here online. Speaking of the one we do here online. We're going to get this one started, if I can find my notes. There we go. Alrighty. So we're still working with uh, flow and pipes. Um, uh, this one's going to be a little bit different, though. We're not going to be talking about the Reynolds number at all. Surprise, surprise. All right, so we got this 40 meter long, 12 millimeter diameter pipe with a friction factor of 0 0.02, and it's used to siphon 30 degree, 30 degree Celsius water from a tank as shown below. Determine the maximum value of H allowed if there's to be no cavitation within the hose. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys remember cavitation or not, but um, the idea is the minimum pressure has to be above your... Minimum pressure has to be above... Uh, has to be above the... Um, vapor pressure, that's the name of it, sorry. I was looking at the variable and can remember what it was. So vapor pressure for water is 4.243 kilopascals, and that's absolute, all right? So we're going to assume, well, for one, we're going to need our Bernoulli equation, and it's extended as usual. Except this time, what we're looking at is this friction factor over here, right? So we have a new term where it's a friction factor multiplied by the length of the pipe, diameter pipe, velocity within the pipe over 2G. All right. So this is the first time we're seeing this in a problem, and we'll get into it. So with any Bernoulli equation problem, we're going to have to pick points. Um, we're going to pick a point here in the tank. And here at the end of the pipe, because that's where a free jet is going to be. And now we need another point that's going to be within the pipe so we can determine what this velocity inside the pipe is. And what we, the only other point that we know stuff about is the point of, we can't have cavitation. So the point of minimum pressure is going to have a pressure like this to find our uh, maximum value of H. So that point is going to be right here in the bend of the hose or at the highest point. Call that point three. Alrighty. So we have Z, P, V. So for point one, two, three. So our Z of one, we're going to call that three. Z of 2, we're going to call that negative H. So right here is my datum, or where my 0 is. Uh, Z is 0 right here at the ground. So minus H, and then 0.3, it's going to be 7 meters. Pressure um, at point 1 is 0 for gauge. And then for my PV, uh, since that's an absolute pressure, I'm going to go ahead and also list 0.1 is its absolute pressure as well. So that's 101 kilopascals absolute. Point pressure at P is going to be our PV or 4.243 absolute. And then point 0.3 is going to be have the same pressure as point 0.1, which is 0 or 101 gauge absolute. Velocity, we don't know what the velocity here is, but we know it's the velocity in the pipe. I'll break this up a little bit, make it a little easier to read. So velocity in the pipe, um, velocity at 2 is going to have the same velocity as velocity 1, right? It's going to have a, right, by continuity equation, velocity at this point in the pipe is going to have the same velocity as this point in the pipe. 
and then we have um, our velocity at point three, or whoops, velocity at point one. That's supposed to be zero, right? Because that's our large tank. I was looking, I was getting ahead of myself. Alrighty, so we have our points, and we're gonna start relating things. So first, between point one and three. So just reference back to this um, equation here. I'm just going to plug numbers in as we go. All right, between one and three, we have pressure of 101 over 9.8, a velocity of zero, and an elevation of three equal to our pressure at 3 of 4.243, 9.8. The velocity that we know don't know over 2 times g, plus our elevation, and then this last term here. So friction factor is given to us as 0 0.02. And the length of the pipe here it's not the total length of the pipe, right? It's just from one point of the pipe to the other. So in this case, that's just going to be 10. Our diameter is 12 millimeters, so that's 0 0.012 meters. I don't know why I put that in parentheses, but you get the idea. Velocity squared over 2 times 9.8. All right. So... Um, you can do the algebra here. Uh, I would move this over, factor out your v squared, um, divide stuff over. Um, but the what you'll get in the end is that your velocity is 2.56 meters per second. Okay? So that's velocity in the pipe. So from there, we can work to between point 1 and point 2. Or if you really wanted to, you could work between point 3 and point 2. But um, between point 1 point one and 2, that's going to make our lives a little bit easier because um, if something's outside the pipe, it's not going to have the effect of this uh, friction factor. So... That makes it really easy because that means the whole left side of our equation um, that's gonna make that's gonna go away, right? Because if we're start if instead of using absolute pressure, we start using gauge pressure, right? Because I know the pressure at these two points is gonna be the same, so the difference is zero. So zero plus zero plus three. Uh, pressure at two zero. Uh, velocity at 2 is that 2.56 that we just calculated. Divide by 2 times 9.8. And then our elevation is that negative h, right? Because we dropped down that amount. And then we have the same friction factor multiplied by same diameter, but this time the length is 10 plus 30. 40 meter length. The velocity that we just calculated, 2 times 9.8. And now this is just um, add this over, subtract 3, multiply everything out, have your calculator do all the heavy lifting, and you'll get h is equal to, well, let's see if I can get that to focus a little bit. That'll work. All right, h is 19.6 meters. So, not a crazy question, but it's something I think that is a little bit new, right? Because this is the first time that we've seen our Bernoulli equation in a problem that we're working on. Um, most of the time we've had a Reynolds number, we've had to do other stuff, and we'll get to that later with uh, minor losses, but with just given a friction factor, then we can resolve that all down to this term. All right. So um, remember, exam two is in two weeks or on 
24-21 if you're not watching this on the day it comes out. So next exam, two weeks from today, which is 4-7, the day this video came out. And make sure you, if you have any questions, hit me up on WebEx or shoot me a message through the SI, uh, the SI website. That's a useful resource for you guys. Um, hope you guys are keeping up in this class. Um, if not, I got all these videos and I got WebEx, you know what I'm saying? Alrighty. Um, have a good day, everybody. Um, I will see you at our next session.